So before we get started with Jennifer, I do have a few uh, announcements that I wanted to make you guys aware of. Uh, so first, the All of Us Research Program Showcase. So if you would like to join us on April the 8th, April 18th, um, there will be a showcase um, using the National Library of Medicine and also the University of Maryland um, will be providing a virtual symposium so showcasing research with the All of Us data set. So you can learn more by scanning the QR code there. And then I will put the, the link to that event in our chat shortly. We also wanted to announce that SAS Studio is now live in the All of Us Researcher Workbench. It is a point and click interface that allows you to perform um, powerful statistical analysis. We have a plethora of support resources on our user support hub as well to help you get started using SAS Studio in the Researcher Workbench. Or you can go to allofus.org uh, slash SAS and you can get full information about that SAS launch that we had this week. That will bring me to the end of our announcements. And so then I will pass it on over to you, Jennifer, who will be discussing more about the variant search option in the researcher workbench. Thank you, Sam. So let me, you should be seeing my presentation. Yes, we can see it. Okay, awesome. So hi, everyone. I'm very excited to share with you a new feature. It's called a variant search in the office research workbench. Uh, cohort and data set builder. So uh, today's objectives, I will introduce the researchers to the new variant search feature in the office research workbench and highlight improvements over the current system and showcase diverse use cases for the future. And last, I will conduct a live demonstration to illustrate its efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, before we dive into the improvements and the use cases of the new feature, I will give a brief overview of the uh, cohort and data set builder in the research workbench so that those who are new to the program can have a sense of what a research workbench is and what a cohort and data set builder is. And lastly, I will give a live demo for this new feature. Uh, the of us research workbench is a cloud-based platform where you can access explore and analyze the OFAS data collaboratively. And uh, so this is the screenshot of the, uh, the main page of my research workbench. And in the research workbench, you can also bring in your own tools or any public tools into it to analyze the data. And the cohort data set builder is a point and click tool uh, in the research workbench that allows you to define specific participant groups to extract tailored uh, data sets for your research. So previously, uh, if uh, you are performing the genomics research and you use the cohort and data set builder, uh, the cohort builder only supports uh, filtering participants who have any type of the genomic data. And then, so the new feature is in the bottom here and you can filter not only by uh, like who have any type of the genomic data, you can also filter by uh, if the participants have any variants. I will give more details later. So for this new feature, uh, you can filter participants who have specific variants or a specific variant. And you can also search by uh, gene variant, RSID or genomic region. You can also filter by gene by consequence clinical significance, allele counts, allele number, and annual frequency. You can also sort your result by allele counts, allele number, and allele frequency. There are some limitations. So uh, uh, you search for some specific region, but when you extract the data, the data set builder will still uh, extract uh, the variants in the whole genome for the selected cohort. The current, uh, the new feature only allows you to define your cohort uh, in a more advanced way. And uh, when you specify the variance, it only, uh, 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 it only applies for the SNPs and indels in the shorter read whole genome sequencing data, not the variance in other data types like the uh, array data, the long read data or the structural variance in the short read whole genome sequencing data. 
and um, it cannot uh, differentiate the carers uh, with the homozygous uh, alternatives. So it, it means that um, the key feature is that if the participant have this variant, so uh, we identify that uh, if you have one copy or two copy, we both say uh, these two categories, this participant have this variant, if that makes sense. Okay, so here are the key benefits of this new feature. Um, if you, so this new feature allows you to define cohorts based on genetic status without the need for in-depth genomic data analysis. So if you're not very familiar with the genomic data or genomic analysis or how to extract uh, specific genomic data, you can just use this co cohort and uh, cohort builder point and click tool to define your cohort. And uh, yeah, I said that it's ideal for those who are not familiar with the complex genomic data analysis techniques. And it is the data set builder, the cohort builder and data set builder is uh, a free to use tool. And uh, even if after you finish the data set builder or cohort builder, uh, you want to extract the, per the person IDs uh, in the notebook, you don't have to use a like hair analysis environment, which is more expensive. You can use a general analysis environment, which is ideal for the researchers with budget constraints. Uh, here are some uh, use cases uh, for the new feature. The first one is that uh, I want to find all the samples with LDL cholesterol, like low LDL cholesterol, uh, less than 70, and have a uh, Caliva pathogenic or likely pathogenic variant in uh, the PCSK9 gene and our variant for RS, uh, this RSID uh, SNP with the RSID. So there are three categories. Previously, you may need to uh, go to our genomic data and to extract their genotype uh, from the whole data set. Uh, if both in this genomic region and for this SNP. And then uh, get the number of the alternative alleles they have to define uh, if they have the variant. And then combine with this LDL results to define your cohort to for your final results. So this is a complex process. And with this new feature, you can do all this in one place and get a result very quickly. And the second one is uh, what a particular BRCA mutation, like BRCA1, in, has a insertion C in this position with the RSID of this SNP, that's in a small number of women with breast cancer. So in this case, uh, we want to uh, extract uh, the female who have breast cancer and they have a particular mutation in this uh, SNP. Uh, as the same as case one, uh, previously, you may want to extract uh, the genomic data for the for all the participants and uh, for the participants who have, for females who have breast cancer and for their genomic data uh, at this position, and then to define uh, if they are carriers or homozygous reference or homozygous uh, alternatives to conduct an analysis. And the last one is uh, more like general, if you want to define your case of control. For example, if I say uh, people who have a variant in this uh, PCSK9 gene are cases, and uh, I can just do that uh, in the cohort and data set builder without going into the, uh, the details of the uh, genotypes to get my results. So these are the, some use cases to give you a sense of how uh, the new feature will work for your research. And I will use the first case uh, as a live demo. So to find all the participants with a low LDL cholesterol and have a clima pathogenic or likely pathogenic variant in this gene and a variant for this SNP. So there are three steps I will search for uh, the G, by gene and the filter by the clean significance, and then, uh, oh, four, and a search by this SNP 
and then filter by uh, also filter by this LDL cholesterol. Uh, let's uh, dive into the research workbench. So this is the main page of my research workbench. Uh, this, uh, these are the workspaces where you can conduct the analysis with your coworkers. And this is our team's shared workspace. Um, and this is the cohort builder and a data set builder where it allows you to, uh, to select your cohort and to query your data set. And I click on the cohort. My first criteria, let me check it. To search by gene, let me get it. I search by, so this is a new, new feature, allows you to search by variants, a sniff in their variants. I click here and I click on search by this gene. And you will see that uh, I, 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 I won't scroll down to uh, to avoid displaying early variants with allele counts less than 40 to comply with the data and statistics dissemination policy. So, so you will see, we have like more than 13,000 workers in this gene. And let me see my next step is to filter by clinical significance, pathogenic or likely pathogenic. Before I do that, I may want to filter by, uh, by a real count. Uh, let me see. Apply. Uh oh. <laughs> So, so this filter actually displays the, the variance with the Leo counts less than uh, 40. So I won't do that. I'll go ahead with my previous protocol just to search by this gene. And I will just select uh, the first several variants. So this is a sort by field. Oh, field by a Leo count. I did it wrong. So, I filter by a Leo count, the 40. Uh, 40. I don't have a up limit. Okay, awesome. So I filter by a Leo count and apply. So now all the variants here uh, have the allele counts. Uh, why it's, shouldn't be, okay. Oh, okay, let me get the max. Apply. So now all the variants here should have allele counts greater than 40 greater or equals to 40. And I select them. So this is one of the uh, downside of this uh, tool. It's like you, there is one button to select, there's no one button to select all the variants and you need to do it manually. So for this demonstration, I will only select uh, the first several ones for to save time and finish in the review. Uh, let me see, safe criteria. And we can see that we have uh, these many participants, uh, half uh, variant uh, we selected. And then I want to filter by cleaver significance. So, and then we want to add here, uh, let me see. Uh, group one. Field. Oh, I can do the filter in one place. Let me go back to it. I search by gene. 
I can do the filter in one place. So I filter by allele counts, 40, apply. And I can also filter by cleaver significance, uh, pathogenic and likely pathogenic, and apply. That is great. So we have three uh, variants left. That's easier. And we finish and review. Okay, let me, I think we uh, clear the previous one. Clear the previous one, reselect these variants. Finish and review and save criteria. And the next one is uh, search by RSID. Let me see. And we use end, that is we described in this use case. So go to the SNP in their variants and we search for the RSID. And we select it and finish and review. And we save criteria. And you will see that that limits to uh, 1000 participants. And then we want to filter by the LDL cluster level. And that is the last one. We search for LDL. And you can use different uh, places to do it. Let me see, different uh, domains to filter the level. We will choose the labs and the measurements. And there is a filter here. Uh, we do uh, so that this one, and we cluster in any value. So we want to select the operator less than or equal to. We set seventy, and we add this. Apply modifiers. Okay, we don't want to do this. And then we save criteria. So now we can see that the final participant, number of participants restrict to 90. And we create this cohort and we PCS K9 and RS. Let me see what is that. RS number and LDL 70. So this is our cohort, we save it. And uh, if you want to create a data set with this cohort, if you want to create a data, uh, data set, you can like extract their genomic data or uh, you know, with other analysis you need. So if you only want a participant ID, uh, you will just select the cohort you created and you uh, select demographics and then collect the person ID here. And this will get all the person ID for the cohort you created. And so it's PC, PCSK9 and RS number. and LDL 70 PID and save it uh, from. So now you can, you will see that it will create a some code to query the IDs and or you can also save this uh, test. You can also save the code to this notebook and you can export it. And you can also choose your, your code, Python R or SAS export. So this is a notebook. So from the very beginning to, to now, everything's free. You can view, so in the dataset builder, during the process, you can view the, uh, the cohort, like the demographics, uh, some age distribution, uh, gender distribution, 
and like recently distribution of your cohort. And those all are, are free. So unless you want to get the actual person IDs, you need to uh, create a environment, just a like general analysis environment is enough. And then you can run this notebook to get your person ID. And so that is my uh, live demo to show you the new feature, varying search feature in the data uh, cohort and data set builder. Um, so um, open to questions. Thanks, Jennifer. We do have a few questions in the chat um, that I thought would be nice to go over as a group. So the first question Cheryl brought up is, um, are you able to subcategorize allele counts based on ethnicity or only by the total number of participants in the entire AOU using the variant search feature? Uh, so filter by allele counts, I think for the current feature, it only allows you to filter by the, the, the whole uh, allele counts, not by the subgroups. Our next question is, um, what does one do for use case number three that you highlighted? If there is a gene variant that you are curious about, but don't know much about the potential consequence, do you just search for the people it was found in and figure out if it's worth investigating from there? So the third one is a very general one. We've already, we have some uh, uh, researchers asking, they want to get uh, the prevalence of a variant in our cohort, in, our, in the office data set. In this case, you may want to define the case and the control. So for example, if you, I want to get uh, the prevalence of the uh, BRCA1 mutation in the uh, of us cohort, you may want to define the case uh, for the BRCA1 mutation and the control of the BRCA1 mutation. It's de it depends on your definition of how to define the case and the control. For example, if I define the case as uh, participants who have uh, any of the variant, in this BRAC1 mutation. And the, that is like what I did for this uh, PCSK9 gene. It's the same process to define the case. Does it make sense? Any follow up to that, um, Kayla, for your question? Yeah, that, that was really helpful. So I was thinking, for example, I have a gene for NVK and I have one variant. So I know like what the control is like, but I have this variant that's found in like some people. And I was just like wondering, okay, like, do I look into this variant or not? Because I see it in quite a few people, but I have no idea much to, as to like what the consequence uh, could be. For context, I'm a rare disease researcher, so I'm always going like, hmm, is that worthwhile in pursuing? Um, so I yeah, have if you can uh, define, if you see like the, if we find the prevalence is very interesting, then you can probably get into that, or you can see uh, these people have this variant, and what are the, uh, uh, what is the effect uh, for this participant? To uh, if you dive into their medication or dive into their some lab measurements to do some investigation to define your research question. Okay. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Kayla. That was a great question. Um, Vincent had a question. It's I think a little unrelated to the, the variant search, but is there an efficient way to get variant counts for each individual participant in all of us? They've tried the dot count method as outlined in how to work with all of us genomic data tutorial. Um, while it does work, it does take multiple hours um, with 32 cores. If any, Jennifer, Henry, or anyone has any recommendations for that from a technical standpoint. It's allele counts based on, uh, allele counts for a participant? Uh, variant counts for each individual, all of us participant with the, the genomic data. Variant counts for each individual. Uh, this what you can do it in the uh, the new variant search feature. You need to go to the uh, the genomic data to extract uh, to extract the genomic data and then to get the result. And Vincent, if you have follow up, feel free to email us. I'm going to put our email in the chat. Um, I think I think you might have emailed us before, but. That way we can get you any support help beyond that as well. 
Um, Cheryl had a good question. Um, if you have a group of variants across several genes, are we able to use the variant search tool to do this? Uh, yes. So uh, in the criteria, uh, you see, you have and the or. And so uh, these are the cohort. And these are the including participants. And for example, you create your uh, SNP index and you search for PCSK9. And you, for example, you select some of them, finish and review and save criteria. And you have all here and how to use it. Uh, here, add a criteria and do it again. For example, let's, if it doesn't make sense, break one, break, break one. And you select some of them and save. Mission review and save criteria. So this is the all. So you find variants uh, across both uh, gene region. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. That takes care of all the questions in the chat. If anyone wants to come off mute, feel free to raise your virtual hand if you have any additional questions for us in regarding the variant search feature. We'd be happy to take those. Um, hi, this is Cheryl. Um, hey, Cheryl. Hey, how are you? Good. 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 Thank you for this. Um, I think it's a great, great feature that's been added. Um, I do have another question. You had said that um, it doesn't matter which order you you do your steps, whether you do start with the gen, uh, the genome variants first or the phenotype, doesn't matter. But my question is, I guess what you're doing is if you have to do them separately, are you in effect doing a union of everything at the end to see? Um, it depends on if like you're using the OR operator that Jennifer just mentioned or an okay. AND operator. And oh, then, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. the SQL will change in the back end depending on which one you use. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you're doing, last question I have is, if you're doing a case control based on all of the features you have, how do you, I guess everybody that you would be searching for initially would be, let's say, an affected case. So then would you then research, uh, go back and redo your search for people under uh, the yes. do not so for your controls? You see? Yeah, you need okay. to do that again. It uh, depends if you define like people who have the uh, electronic health records data, mm -hmm. uh, uh, your, your whole cohort is people who have the electronic health records data. Those who have the variant other cases and the rest can be the control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But initially those ones that are controlled because they don't have a variant, they're filtered away. So if you wanted to capture them, you have to go back and then say like, people who do not have that variant? Um, or how you do you can say? do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can do that. You can just, uh, you need to get all the participants mm -hmm. in the EHR data and then subtract those who have the variant from your data set mm -hmm. okay. yeah, to get your control, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl, that was a great question. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, can I, I want to piggyback on Cheryl's question uh, with the, for example, I'm sharing a workspace with my colleagues. They usually give me the EHR data and then I try to extract the genomic data and I've been having issues in the overlap. Um, so for example, even in the case study, I think Jennifer, you mentioned uh, people with breast cancer uh how did did you create a cohort for the breast cancer or is it f for from all the uh, snp indel data uh so you want to extract the genomic data for the participants who have breast cancer yeah that let's say let's take that as an example yeah so if you want to extract all the genomic data and you, for the people who have breast cancer, 
you need to like uh, first define your participants who have breast cancer and then to uh, extract the genomic data in the data center builder. Okay, yeah, because uh, I think uh, I've been having issues with the metadata file that wants to be generated. Uh, I've not used the variant data data search yet, but I've used the short read whole genome sequencing. And I've um, been... Are you filtering the matrix table by person IDs? Uh, you... yeah, yes. Yeah, so uh, so if you get your the person IDs for your participants who have uh, breast cancer, and then you can filter the matrix table to the person IDs and then get the genomic data for those participants so for downstream analysis. Say, and then, so it's in the cohort uh, builder? That is not in the cohort builder, and it's not uh, in the new feature. So you need to um, actually load the genomic data and extract the, the data you need. Do you mind showing us how how to go about it, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me see. Let me share my screen. So, um, I think we can use the one of the featured workspace. Uh, discard changes. We go to hell. And here we have an example um, to get a profit. And we use this one, which uh, was one. So if you are analyzing hail, you may want to use a hail analysis environment here. Use a hail genomics analysis. And so, you import here and load this data. So it depends on which genomic data, you, which matrix table you're using. Load this into the matrix table, into here, and then filter columns. So, let me draw. so you want to keep, uh, and you load your uh, the file with the person ID into here, and then, um, filter the matrix table to the file with the uh, person ID. That is the matrix table that you need for the participants who have breast cancer. Oh, okay. So it's not the, so first extraction is the genomic and then add the person ID. Uh, it doesn't matter. So you extract the person ID and then save it as a file and save it to your workspace bucket and then load it to hell, and then uh, to filter the matrix table. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jennifer. The next question we have um, is from Kayla again. What happens if the cases you're interested in are individuals who are homozygous and the controls are heterozygous? Yeah, so that is the limit. We we cannot differentiate in like homozygous uh, uh, alternatives uh, with the carriers. So, yeah. That, Kayla, that question has come up. So our um, workbench team has considered that and we have a lot of feedback on that, that feature in this, in this set of the cohort builders. So more to come hopefully in the future on that. Um, okay, I think that will take us to the last of our questions for the variant search. Um, I think Maggie had a question specifically about um, I have a cohort of participants who answered yes to the family history of breast cancer, and you just work for, with survey data for now. The next step, I want to desegregate the data uh, we already have by demographics. So the best way you can do this is you'll create, you can create a cohort with both the survey and the demographic information, and then you'll have uh, the data set builder, which you can add concepts at demographics. We have a prepackaged demographics concept set 
And then you can have the survey data information, which will export um, in two different tables. And then you can merge those tables to get all that information. Um, a couple of our featured workspace kind of show how to bring two data types together, such as survey data and then demographics from the person table. So I would start with how to get started with register tier data and how to get started with control tier data. Both of those featured workspaces have examples of that. Um, unfortunately, I can't go into it, the details here, but if you want to join us for our drop-in office hours on Tuesday, we'd be happy to assist you. Okay, well, that will take us to the end of our presentation. Just an FYI, our next drop-in office hours for registered researchers will be on Tuesday um, at 1 p.m. Central Time, where myself and a few of my colleagues from the DRC will be there to answer any of your questions. You can also email us at support at researchalloofus.org any additional questions you have. And feel free to check out our events calendar for upcoming events such as this one. And I will give you guys some time back. Thank you, Jennifer, so much for your presentation and thank you all for joining us today.